all right, a story, but I actually think that, that Adam and Virgil have already done that. So I want to just ask you a question. Do you like happy stories best or sad stories best? Happy stories, happy stories. Anybody like sad stories? Yeah. <laughs> I like sad stories too, sometimes. Why do you like sad stories? Because they have a lot of feeling in them. Why do you like sad stories? Can you tell me? I don't know. Um... It's okay. Uh... One of my favorite shows is often there's a line in there which says that uh, sad is just deep. <laughs> it, it, sad is happy for deep people. <laughs> and I think there's a point there. But today, hey, what do you think? Today we keep a story. And I want to ask you a question. Is it a sad story or a happy story? Mm. Kind of both. Yeah. We, we, we talk about things that are really not very nice about the person who is uh, betrayed by one of his friends about a person whose other friends run away and not there for him, about a person who's treated really badly by people who are supposed to care for society and look after the people. And at the end of it all, it's good. You know, it can't get much sadder in some ways, and yet we call it Good Friday. Because the story really isn't about all of those things. The story is about the man in the middle of it, whose name we call Jesus, but we could call his name love. Because that's what we see in this story. A love of a type, depth, of a commitment that we have never quite seen before or since. This is who we celebrate. And because we celebrate love, this incredibly sad story of betrayal, of loss, and death that we're going to walk through today becomes a happy story, or at least a dependable story, a joyful story. And it'll let you think about what the difference between happy and joyful might be. Maybe we'll come back to that sometime between now and next time. Where we do this, 
So mixed up when you think about it, it's actually a deeper meaning to why you cross the self. There's the mind that is of the self. Oh, okay, I'm in the love of God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Not only that, this is also my identity. And there is more. Every single Christian who actually calls himself, we actually unite the where we cross ourselves. So the next time when you cross yourself, think about it. It's just like <coughs> Israel, and you're on a tour there, they will let you or show you how to walk the Stations of the Cross. We call it the Stations of the Cross because it's had that name for a long time, but the reality is, it's a path. And we know with the conversations we're having today, it's a path that marks some really interesting and really heavy moments for us. This station, just like Father asked us, is this joyous? Is this tough? Is this sad? This station's a little bit of, I think, joy in the midst of the sadness. Is something scary happening? Yes. But this is a moment where Jesus, who is being forced to carry his own cross, and that cross is going to be the thing that takes his last breath, he falls with it because it's heavy. But the reason that I think it's joyous is because somebody comes to help. And that to me is joyous. Let me read something for you and I want you to listen and see if you can find the joyous in it. So Jesus was having a conversation with his friends on some of the last days. And he said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes him who sent me. And whoever gives, ooh, good word, whoever gives even a cup of water to one of these little ones, and that name knows me. Then we hear about this. As Jesus grew weary, I was carrying the cross and the soldiers there, you might be my example, hold that up, carrying his cross, the soldiers there were compelling him, go, 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 and he <laughs> fell, and then the soldiers, <laughs> and then the soldiers compelled a passerby, that's a stranger, compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, come and help him. 
this was a passerby. They were absolute strangers. Good for you, see, I must invite this. Is your hand not good? Is that all right? I'm completely close to focus. There you go. Now the weight of this and the winner is shared between two. It's cut in half, right? We didn't even know each other. To me, that has a bit of a joyful moment when the weight of something, ugh, oh my gosh, you're doing a really good job. Ugh, the burden of this, they are very strong. The burden of this is cut in half. And somebody, without even knowing him, comes and helps. Ollie Wally, can I borrow you, please? The cross, pretty big, right? Do we think big? Let's imagine Jesus is my height. When we see all of those pictures, the cross is even bigger. It's got to be heaven. But, but, it would also be very visible. That burden that our friend shared is very visible. Ooh, look, there it is, it's a cross. My friend is on the ground, my friend needs help. I don't even know my friend, as per the story. Do we think, I won't go through that. Do we think it will be really easy to see the cross from across a room? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we have a confident yes. Do you think you can see with your eyes all burdens, all of the things that might make somebody feel heavy? Do you think we can see those? No. No? My friend Ollie Wally is here. And can I ask you to, I'm going to spin you around. Ollie Wally is here, and Ollie Wally has a backpack on. Let's see if we can add some burdens to this. What are some burdens? For me right now, it's schoolwork. You know what? Schoolwork is worth two BASs. There we go. Another burden. Another burden. Chores. Amen to that. That's a chore for me. I'm putting two in. Thank you, Ollie Wally. That was your mom's fault. That's why there's one in. What's another burden? Can I do that one more time and twice as loud, please? If you did something wrong, you might feel a lump in your stomach. What do you call that lump? Worry? Ooh, does anybody else have other names for that lump? Guilt. Ooh, guilt. Ooh, that's another one. Ooh, what ugly words. Yes. I'm sorry, we need more, friend. More. <laughs> Here we go, what are these? It's like hymnals, okay. Worry, guilt, schoolwork, schoolwork, chores. Let's be honest, I'm a younger brother and I know that I am a burden. <laughs> you can't always see the burdens. How's my friend Ollie Wally doing? All of those burdens that are in there, can you see those? No, if my friend Ollie Wally is carrying them around, would you see those usually? No. But we heard in here, didn't we? Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these. As Jesus grew weary of carrying the cross, the soldiers compelled a passerby. Never does it say. Jesus really likes it when we ask people for help and they help us and Jesus is happy with that person. It kind of sounds like the stranger helped without asking for anything in return. And it kind of sounds like it's a really good thing when we help somebody with a burden and they don't even ask. Is anybody else here very bad at asking for help? Well, Ollie Wally over there. So Ollie Wally's one of those people. I am too. I'm really bad at asking for help when I need it. But I can see Ollie Wally over here, and I know it. So I know he's struggling. 
and he's dramatic and you're perfect. <laughs> and I get to be the president. We won't make this look like a miraculous healing. But I will gladly help him with this. He was my favorite thing that I've ever learned about burdens and helping with burdens. I will gladly help you with your burden. Here's what we're going to do. Shall we? It is not for me to carry. It is for us to say thank you and walk away from it. He steals my video on his back. <laughs> there we are. That, I think, is the joy for us to remember. Let's make sure that we need help you ask. Make sure that we identify others and offer before we are ever asked. I think that sounds like a joyous moment. Sometimes what can feel like a really dark story, right? Yeah, it's a lot. And if I could ask, can I say? Yes. Here we go. Thank you. Now I'm not even gonna ask. I'm not even gonna ask. Wouldn't even have to ask, because I've got all these friends here. Okay, friends, you know what your job is? Everybody else, shall we? Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me. And I'm going to read a passage from the Bible. Luke 23, 27 to 31. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to him, turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the birds, the berries, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? So the women that I'm speaking about, they were friends of Jesus. They loved Jesus, and they believed in Jesus. And they were sad to see their friends suffering. Not only were they sad, but they felt helpless. They wanted to help him, but they couldn't. So what did they do instead? Give them a mm. They stood with him. They cried for him and prayed for him. Now maybe you can remember a time possibly at school, when one of your friends hurt themselves. Maybe they scraped their knee or bumped their head at recess. Can you think of a time when that happened? And they were crying. You wanted to take away their hurt, but you didn't know what to do to help them. You couldn't make the pain go away. But you stayed with them, right? You didn't run away. You stayed right there with, with them. And when the teacher sent your friend to the office to get a band-aid or some ice, did they go along? Mm, they always send a friend, right? All these two people. Why do you think that is, Anna? For support and safety. Yeah. Just being there will make your friend feel better. One of the other things that we can do when people that we know are sad or sick or hurting is pray. And that's what the women of Jerusalem did. They prayed. So at this station, we have pieces of paper in the shape of teardrops. And I've got some pencils here. And I would like everyone to think of someone that might need a prayer. Maybe they're sad or they're sick or lonely. And you can write your, that name on the paper and hang it on my little tree. Okay, I'll be you one of can I get one too? Thank you. So I just write on here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Spell it in the handwriting, not my strong suit. How's it going? Okay. 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 
to cheer. Well, I think anything is a place for skull. It sounds like a pretty scary place, doesn't it? Lots of dice. We use them when we play games. And what happens when you play a game and you roll dice? How does it work? Does anybody know how it works? You roll a number. Is it a number? So, what my number? All right, who wants to roll a set of dice? All right, roll a set of dice for me. You throw it over there. Whoa. <laughs> Two. You got six. We're going to roll next. Five and one. You got another six. So. We're all going to get a chance to roll. Remember what your number was. Five and one. Another six. Oh, uh, I think you'll play with the dice. Oh, the dice. Oh, the dice. Six, six, six. That one was three. All right, gather up the dice again so the people can throw that haven't thrown. Seven. Oh, what was that? What number was that? Seven. 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 The nicest piece of clothing that Jesus had on before the crucifixion. That's what the guards did by drawing lots. The dice were in plastic, they would have been made of hard wood, and they wouldn't have been made. His <laughs> 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 father thought I had done. So we all draw lots almost on a daily basis. Without without dice or not, we're all left to make decisions. In this case, the guards let the dice make the decision. It was 9 o'clock in the morning when they crucified Christ. We're now at what, 10, 10.30? 10 no. So, so Jesus would have been on the cross at this point in time, or getting ready to go on the cross. And they put an inscription on the top of it saying, King of the Jews. And with them they crucified two. How many of you eat salt and vinegar chips? <laughs> How many of you eat salt and vinegar chips? You never do. Everybody takes a couple of chips and eats all Because now you think you don't like vinegar, but you eat salt and vinegar chips. Now you, now you like it. Now you like, now you like the vinegar. <laughs> because it's on salt and vinegar chips. But Jesus didn't get chips. He got the vinegar soaked as fun. In the same way the priests, oh, in the same way the chief priests along with the scribes were mocking him and saying, you've saved others, you cannot save yourself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Even the people on either side of him were taunting him. Although I believe the one bandit didn't taunt him. The one bandit said to him that he realized who he was. And Jesus promised that he'd see him in his kingdom. So when it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. So for three hours, what would you feel like at 12 noon today? What would you feel like at 12 noon today if everything became black and dark? There was no sun. Everything went dark at noon hour in the middle of the day. What would you think was happening? Oh, 
What do you think is happening? Uh, two things. You're sending the God, or you're giving him. So, but if, if it went dark today at 12 noon, and all the sky went like black as night for three hours, what would you think was taking place? Would it be something joyous and good? Or would it be something sorrowful and bad? Bad. Would you think it was the end of the world, maybe? It would be terrifying. People would wonder what is happening when the whole world goes dark in the middle of the day for three hours. And then the people heard Jesus cry out with a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabatani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran and built the sponge again with sour wine and put it on a stick so that he could drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come down and take him down. So now we're at the point where Jesus is at the end. He's taken all that he can do and all that he can take in humiliation and in pain and in suffering. And people yelling at him and some people spitting at him, calling him names. You all told me how you feel when one person treats you like that. He's got hundreds of people that have never believed in him. And now he's got people that believed in him, but now they doubt him. The land has become dark. People are terrified, and he's breathed his last. So that's where we are today when we move on to the next stage. Here we are, friends, and welcome to the temple. It is the time of Passover, so it's a big deal. It's going to be busy. There's going to be a market. There's going to be people yelling. How many kilos of oranges do you want? What are you going to have for dinner? Who's heading up the hill? Where did you park your ram? I don't know how it works. But it will be big and loud and lots of great smells. And it's the temple when we think of our lives now temple, we would say, is maybe where people would go to meet with God or talk with God. Can anybody else picture something kind of like a temple? Anybody? No? How about some heavy hints? Church? That's the one! Thank you, sir! Exactly! But a little bit different, and by that, I mean a lot of it different from how we view church. This was the map of the temple. This X is not a you are here moment. This is a, this is where we think we get to be very close to God. That sounds kind of cool, right? But there seem to be a lot of walls, right? So if you head on in, this is where you get to buy your fruits and vegetables. Oh, and if you make your way around, and maybe you can afford to get into this area. You're well thought of, you have a good family name, all of the right things. You do all of them at sale, but all of the time. That sounds like a big brother thing, not a little brother thing. So they could get in about this far. Only the priest, the priest, not a priest, the priest, once a year was allowed to go in there. They thought that if you went in there, poof, into smoke and ashes. Scary, right? That's a really good way to protect things. Right? It's kind of like leaving your bag on the subway and then leaving a sign above it. If you touch my bag, poof, into ashes. No, you don't touch it, right? It's a good way to deal with things. So here it was, and at this last moment, right in this beautiful spot right here, that's where the curtain was. Can anybody imagine a curtain today? Yes? Yes? Good. Heavy hints are a good thing. The curtain was there. 
When we were at the station over here, we heard that very sad moment. I'm going to read it again, and I want you to listen for any of the big action words. And you know me, I'm dramatic, so I will point them out to you just in case you're not big on verbs. I love action words. Let's listen for those. Yes? See? Who's it first? Then Jesus gave out a loud cry and breathed his last. And then the centurion, that's that soldier, then the centurion looked to his side, was facing him, and there in that moment as he breathed his last, do you know what happened? Well, just like we heard over there, the sky went black. What did the ground do? There was an earthquake, and it shook. Everything big and dramatic, and you know I like big and dramatic. Everything big and dramatic was happening, and it was pointing to this. All of these ways of no access for you, none for you, no entry for you, need not apply, all of those boundaries, all of a sudden, in that moment, they were torn. And what were we left with? Do you think God was in a box hiding there the whole time? Do you think that the curtain tore and we went, oh, there is Jesus. He was behind the couch all along. I found him. No? What did we get instead of all of these boundaries? What did we get? Stand right here, my friend. Can I borrow you? Yes? Access. Both of you. What? I'm sorry, what? Come up here and stand with them and yell that out for me. Access to what? Stand on that square and look right through. Access to what? Access to what? There you go. Oh, please, friends, I know we're up to the top of the church. It's not polite. We all of a sudden got access. Instead of this and this and that person and those people and that Christ standing between you and God, here you go, friends access all the time access can you pray only when you are in church no does god stay here all day every day and wait for us to show up on sunday is he in healy will park healy you don't think god is in the park in the trees in the beautiful sunshine is god there is God on your walk home? Yes. No? Where is God then? I'm sorry, what? Oh, <coughs> by. Yes. yes, this young child right here has it. <laughs> Where is God? Is God at Healy Willen Park? Yes. Is God right in here? <coughs> is God over there? Yes. Is God in her? Yes. Is God everywhere? Yes. Yeah. Is God behind a curtain? Yep, that's true too. Is God only behind a curtain? No. There we go. <coughs> that, friends, is a big part of why this gets to be another conversation about joy in kind of a sad conversation. Sometimes it's nice to remember what's coming when the times right now are tough, right? So what we're gonna do here, friends, is, because let's be honest, Will not go, we will not go into church history, friends, I promise you, although it's always a fun argument. There have been times where folks have tried to put walls back up. And you know what? We always have to remember if it feels like somebody's trying to put a wall up and tell you God's behind it and I'm in control of him, I want you to have this with you so that you can remember, my friend, that's not true because God is everywhere, and the curtain was torn, and we were given, we, God was always there, we were given, access. <coughs> access. that's the one access that he raises across. We're gonna take a strip of this with us to remember that access. 
don't get tripped by your axe. That steel is, is going to be a mess. You'll take this, and we will sing. Wow. Jesus. It's Friday after sunset is the Sabbath and you do not work. So that means it gives you about maybe two, maximum three hours to take Jesus down from the cross and then take Jesus and, and, and basically we are bound him with oil and spices. But I have a question. Do you know how heavy is the whole thing? How heavy is this, the uh, horizontal beam? Any guess? Very Yes. Uh, well, give me a number. Well, that's all the total. So the horizontal beam is about 100 pounds. So you have the vertical beam, which is actually a little bit thicker. And then you have Jesus on it, so you're talking about 400 pounds. So you have to take 400 pounds down and then get Jesus out. And then a really good person called Joseph from Arabia, Arabia said, well, he went to Pilate and said, I want Jesus' body because I have a new tomb I want to put Jesus in. So Pilate said, okay, you can have Jesus' body. So the women and the friends and Joseph took Jesus down and then they want to, this is a custom that you have to do before you can bury a dead body. That's you can rub clean with glory and put spice. Do you know why? Anybody likes pickles? Yeah, do you know why you, you cook pickles as what? Herbs and pickles? Yeah, because it pres preserves the body. So you have to prepare the body, wash it with oil and spice. So, and, before, and then you wrap it in cloth and you put it in a tube. And then you roll a big stone over the tube. So, now I want you to take a sniff of the spices that are available at the time of Jesus. So, we have, I don't know if you know cumin oil. Blind slip and see if we can tell what it is. And this one is special because you know how we make smoke in the church? That's when we put this incense on burning cold tablets and then there we get the smoke and those. These are frankincense. And these are the, some of the essential oils so you can take a sniff. Yeah, it's not still and good, it's really, really good. Yeah, some of those. So that concludes the, the uh, stations of the cross. I hope all of you had a chance to. So and when, we, when you look at the piece of blood, when you look at the cross, and remember the prayers you have on that tree, this is what our life as Christians is all about. There is some sorrow, there's some joy, but at the end, we are all loved by God just as we are. So just remember that if nothing else, Jesus brought you all that love of love. So I hope all of you have a lovely, lovely Good Friday and also looking forward to the resurrection on Sunday. And we also have a uh, I love this level of respect for the kids. I do it the same way, you know. You're hopeful. How's your brother? He's like bigger than you. Really? Yeah. Is he taller than your dad? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yikes. Is he terribly stylish? Oh, I have to go and get that thing before it tips off. Yeah. Yeah.